Me Before You. While it is a highly rated movie, does it really portray a quadriplegic's life accurately? This movie takes place in a European country, and there is this girl named Lou that really needs a job to help support her family, and she had went through a substantial amount and Please, couldn't I'll find something that she was quite good at, and then this job to help a quadriplegic man just happened to show up. And this is new care and companionship for a disabled man. After her interview, she started helping this quadriplegic man right away, and she soon realized that he was kind of a dick. Here's what I know about you, Miss Clark. My mother says you're chatty. Yeah. Can we strike a deal whereby you are very unchatty around me? Okay, a really big dick. Sorry, I'm being chatty again. Lame. You're insane. Your whole family's insane, and you're a god-awful singer. I hope your dad was better. Then after working for Will for a while, she had overheard his parents talking about his plans to be euthanized. After his accident, he, he refused to adapt to his new condition because he was going through such a tremendous amount of pain, and he felt like he was a burden to others. And after Lou had overheard his plans of being euthanized, she decided to make it a point to try to make him want to survive and to thrive in this world and change to his new condition. And that somebody would be able to love him. You've got a funny look on your face. Please don't tell me you shaved off my eyebrows. First, the reason why I really like this movie is because of the actor Emily Clark. She plays Lou Clark and she does a phenomenal job. If you do not know her, she is from Game of Thrones. She is Khaleesi, the mother of all dragons. And personally, she's one of my favorite characters. Emily Clark is an extremely expressive character in this movie. And I applaud her for that because you don't see that as much in movies these days. I don't normally get that connection with people, and she brought me to a level that I normally don't get to in movies. But she wasn't completely shy and introverted the whole scene. She also had some backbone, and had defended Will after the horse ride. You know what, Sharon? You can stick your premier badge right up your relaxed dining area. And in another, she wouldn't take any more shit. You don't have to be an ass. I'm staying. Not because I care about you or particularly enjoy your company, but because I need the money. Now, Will Trainer did a fabulous job. There was obviously some things that he did incorrectly, just judging from the experiences that I've had, but he really portrayed this character fairly good. There was quite a few scenes that I had thought were hilarious because I have experienced those troubles and I knew what he was going through and uh, how to overcome them. And then there was other parts that were kind of offensive. And it's sad to see that society has this stereotypical view. And one of them was how he even handled things because he was just an asshole. And I mean, have I met some pissed off quads? Sure. But nothing to like the extent that he expressed. Some things I noticed wrong right away. In the book, it says that he is a C for quadriplegic. And the functionality that he had, it just, it doesn't add up. Because he had thumb movement, but no arm movement. And I'm a C4-5 quadriplegic, and I have bicep, I have a little bit of a twist on this right wrist, I have shoulder movement, neck movement, I don't have any tricep or dexterity. So for like him not being able to feed himself and do other things 
It just, it didn't make any sense. A few other things I saw wrong is he did not have any Job's or Ted socks on through the whole movie. And if he does have blood pressure problems, he should be wearing Ted socks. In the beginning, they showed how he was taking medication for blood pressure in the morning. He was doing some muscle relaxants. And he was also taking some neurological meds. And I had that problem a little earlier on when I was going through more pain than obviously now. But if you're gonna be taking blood pressure meds, you're going to probably need Job stocks and maybe even an ab binder at that. A few things that they did wonderful is they showed the commode and not necessarily his morningly process, but just the idea of it. They also were talking about the autonomic dysreflexia, which is a condition that only quadriplegics get after a certain break in the spinal cord. So only higher ones have this condition while lower ones don't. But they talked about that and they showed like sweating only above the break and not below. Will doesn't sweat the way we do. If he gets even a slight chill, his temperature goes haywire. Yeah, but he Just said go get us a fan and a damn towel. We are quick. Which can be different for certain quadriplegics. But on the other spectrum, he had left and spent the night at this hotel. And he had autonomic dysreflexia from later on that night till that morning. And the nurse yelled at Clark and said, hey, you know, he reacts to things differently now. I would imagine he had that autonomic dysreflexia because he had a full bladder and needed to be calfed, but it escalates high. And that should have put him in the hospital. I mean, if he, if he didn't get calfed when he was supposed to, I mean, the movie should have ended right there. Because autonomic dysreflexia, that's a life-threatening condition. I mean, your, your blood pressure will keep on raising until it either gets relieved or if it doesn't, it's going to keep on raising till you die. I tried to call. I did give him painkillers. Might as well give him M&M's. Well then another scene that kind of pissed me off is when Annie Clark and Will Turner were in a van. And he said, I just want to be a man who's been to a concert with a girl in a red dress. Just a few minutes more. There were quite a few scenes like this where they had separated masculinity and quadriplegia. Since when can you not be a masculine quadriplegic? One of the parts that severely pissed me off is when Lou's boyfriend said, Oh, poor guy, he will never be able to have sex again. Then later on, Will also stated the same thing. We'll see you naked and not, not be able to do. Oh, God, Clark, if you had any idea what I want to do to you right now. <laughs> Every quad is different. And I will spare you the details, but this is how it works. Everything below your break is no longer controlled by your mind. And this means everything. So if I can't move my triceps or my fingers, that accounts for my legs and other parts. There are two different kinds of quadriplegics to the best of my knowledge regarding this part. And there are the ones that either stick up by any kind of stimuli. I mean, shit, I can barely go down the road without hitting a bump in it flying up. Then there are the other quadriplegics that get devices or pills that help with the action. So it is still capable. And seeing this mentality and the stereotype, you're dehumanizing us. And you're giving the idea that quadriplegics can't perform, which is completely false. That we're a burden on the community. And that is why most every review from a disabled person are pissed off.
And you can say, what are you getting so worked up about? It's just a fictional story. No, it's a statement. And it's really making everybody in my disability community, in our extended disability community, upset because it is striking a chord. Because you see, society has said for a long time, disabled people are a burden. And a movie like this smacks you in the face that offends the disability population because it's making all the wrong statements. Do you know how many people that are paralyzed would give anything for somebody to love them like that? Yeah, the disability is just viewed as a problem without a cure. Some people just need to learn that certain words are kind of offensive. Oh God, this is a stereotypical pity party narrative. So wait, we can't be a man and a wheelchair user? Did I miss the memo? Yeah, there's a lot of demasculizing and desexualizing. This is a joke, right? I don't think people realize how offensive this is. Me Before You is just another ableist storyline. It's nothing really new. It's made by the non-disabled, it's for the non-disabled. Now, a few more things that didn't add up was the burn on his wrist. I mean, it almost symbolized blotchiness, but normally when we go through AD, which is what he was going through at the time, we get blotchiness on our chest and our stomach. But for him to get it like on his left arm, and it almost looked like more of a burn. And if that was from his accident, I mean, that was two years ago. So I would have thought it would have healed up by now. And boy, the lungs that this quad had. I mean, I wish I was able to scream like that. Louisa! I really liked the use of sexuendos. Something about men. Yes, it's French gay porn. There was a lot of funny scenes. <laughs> You're watching French gay porn, I hope. The Wi-Fi connection's not strong enough. And even though they had slandered the quadriplegics saying they can't perform, there was still a good amount of joking. I rate in a 10 star scale, and me before you, I'm gonna give six and a half stars for the simple reason of the facts that they had wrong about us. It was very offensive, and you can't slander a whole community. But this movie, it really was a good movie. And it wasn't made for the quadriplegic. It was made for the general public. And they had some phenomenal acting and they should be rewarded for that. For the general person, you'll enjoy the movie. Just don't take everything you see on TV and believe it. Now spread the message, guys, and let's show this world what we're truly capable of. And Amelia, if you're still looking for a real quad, you know where to find me. Now, if you like this video and you would like to see more content like it, please subscribe. And I will see you next time.